Hello my desktop publishing students. This assignment is assignment number 85, Antique Sales. So it's open on my screen and I've saved it and I assume you'll do the same thing. Now in the first line, or point number two, it says select the range and it says D5 to E14, but I don't think that's correct. So take a look. On, if you've got the same one on your screen as mine, we would click in D5 and hold down your shift key and click in D11. So um, this is what you should have selected. So I think this is the one that you'll have, but in case you don't, then D8 to E14 might be correct. So leave it at D5 to E11, and it says create a clustered column chart. All right, so we're going to go to Insert, and we're going to go to this one that says 2D and which was we want. We want a 2D clustered column chart, just a plain chart. All right. And I'm going to move it over here. Or actually, I can leave it up here for right now. Okay. All right. And it says add a data table. Oh, edit the chart to read July revenue. Okay. So we've got July in here. And what we want to do is we want to put in revenue here. All right, so this is the amount of money that we received from the sales of beds, dressers, dining tables, end tables, china cabinets, and chairs, July revenue. All right, so now it says add a data table with legend keys. Okay, so we're going to go to design, and we're going to go to add chart element, and we want to add a data table with legend keys. And now it gives us our July revenue for each item that we sold. So it makes it very easy for you to read. All right, the next piece says um, put the chart in the range of A14 to L. So we're going to go here. There's A14. So roughly we want it there. And we're going to drag it over and it said to L. Okay, first of all, let's go click in the spreadsheet and let's change the page layout to landscape so that we get the, and I'm in just inside, so I'm fine. And I can come down a little bit because of, I can fit it in here. So I can come down about like that. Okay, so you can see the chart easily. Now what we're supposed to do is we're supposed to add the August and September data to the chart and change the chart title. All right, so first of all, we're going to right click and you're going to go to select data and now we see this it says D5 to E11 but in our case now to take August and September it would be G11 right so remember as I showed you all I have to do is change the letter to G and I have got um, the range that I want D5 to G11 Otherwise, we could have went and reselected the whole thing. It's your choice there. All right, so say OK. And now I have, you see your data table shows July, August, and September. You've got three bars for each one indicating each one of the months. And now my chart um, title has to read third quarter. So 3RD space and um, put in third quarter revenue. Q-U-A-R-T-E-R, -E make sure you spell it right. And now, um, that should be good. Didn't tell us to fill it with anything, but you know how to do that, so I don't need to go over that with you. All right, add a texture uh, to one data series. Okay, so let's take the first, this dark blue one, and we are going to go to Format Data Series, and we want a texture fill. So we want to go to Fill here. I want to go to... Um, picture or texture and I'm going to choose for texture fill here. Um, I think I'll choose the marble. And I'm going to put a border on it just so it stands out. So I'm going to go to solid line on the border and I'm going to put red on it so that you can see it. Okay, And I'm going to make the border a little bit thicker there. So you can definitely see the border on there with the marble in between. And then it asked you to choose the next data series and put a gradient fill. And this time, I'm tired of looking at those other ones. Make your own. Okay, so I'm going to choose um, red 
and then I will choose yellow and then I'm going to go to purple. I could leave the blue there, that's all right. Okay, so I'm going to pull this over and now I'm going to change. I'm not going to go with radial, I'm going to go with linear and that's all right, just right there. I'm quite happy with that. All right, and then in the last one, I will use a gradient fill because it tells us to. And um, now this time it said use a two color gradient. Okay, so therefore I am going to change it on this one. So I'm going to remove this one with the red X and I've got two colors here and I will go to linear and I will choose just straight up and down. All right, so that I've got two different ones there. But I maybe shouldn't use red, I should use a different color so you can see. So here, maybe instead of red, I'll put in green. <coughs> there, it's definitely different now. Okay, that's good. Click on your spreadsheet and save that. And now, okay, watch here. Okay, so um, we will, um, go to let's say this data series okay and we want to go over here to the options oh no I don't and I want to go to the series overlap okay and I want to change it to now watch here as I drag out on here so as I drag this and I make it smaller do you see how the bars overlap now if I go back here you see how they spread apart. And you saw that in the previous one, okay? Except that they were cones. So watch that, the series overlap. You can bring them in, and so you can space them out. It told us to put at minus 24. Okay, so let's go to, okay, minus 24. Oh, I want to put it up. There. Okay, so they told us to leave it at that spacing. All right, and then the gap width was supposed to be at 75. Okay, so I want to go here and put in 75. And did you see the bars get wider? Okay, when I went to uh, minus 24, watch here. I'll go up again. Oh, whoa, whoa, I didn't want to touch that. Okay, that's okay. And here, my gap width, I wanted to, you see the bars getting skinnier? And they're going to get real skinny. There's still the distance. The overlap is still there, but they're getting skinnier. So they're changing there's the width of them. So play until you get something that looks good to you. Okay, now it says to us, remove the data for the end tables and the chairs. Now you've got two ways to do this, okay? So I want you to right click and go to select data. So now in my data, I don't want the end tables and the chairs, all right? So now watch. If I take the end table, I said end tables, yeah, and take the chairs, if I check them off, and now if I say OK, then I only have beds, dressers, dining tables, and china cabinets. So let's watch that again. Right click and go to select data. And I want to put the check mark back in for end tables and I want to click here for chairs. And if I say OK, now I have them all back again. All right, I want to show you another way. Someday you just may need to know this. And select the data. And uh, now I'm going to say that I'm going to delete my data that's there. And I want to select my headings. And I want the beds and the dressers and the dining tables, right? And now I'm going to use my control key and I want the china cabinets, okay? So do you see I selected specifically exactly what I wanted. 
and you see you just have the four so it's the same thing and now we just have the four so I want you to know both ways both ways doesn't matter are fine but you've got to go to select data and now this time delete this and you said no Lee I want them all alright so therefore we're going to go and choose them all they're all here again and once they're all selected I can say no I don't want the beds I don't want the dining tables and I don't want the china cabinets and then there's what I have alright so let's go back right click select data and here we do we want the beds back and we don't want the end tables or the chairs so put the dining tables back take the end chairs out put the china cabinets back and take the chairs off all right say okay so very nicely that's what you should have and that's what you learned there all right so save your work and now let's go to file print and let's just see how we fit on the page and we got one of one everything fits on that's great all right let's go back and we could put something in the chart area maybe a chart fill a light color solid fill actually that blue is fine and then let's put a border on for a change solid line and um, I'm happy with my red and let's go this up so that you can see it all right about 1.5 or 1.75 at least you can see it and it just looks better when we go to print it so put your headers and footers on and I'll stop here and uh, that one's finished